In Climate Watch, a report by the United Nations issues a stark warning about the future of our planet. According to more than 100 experts from 52 countries who revealed their findings this week, we must reduce emissions from farming, forestry, and other human land use. These account for 23% of greenhouse gas emissions, and the concern is that those numbers are only projected to increase with population growth and consumption patterns. CBS News correspondent Adriana Diaz has more. Fossil fuel emissions have long been seen as the major culprit driving climate change, but human land use or misuse from agriculture and forestry accounts for roughly a quarter of greenhouse gas emissions. The way we produce food and what we eat contributes to the loss of natural ecosystems and declining biodiversity, and this exacerbates climate change. That vicious cycle is the key conclusion of the UN report, which says fundamental changes are urgently needed, including how we produce and consume food. Environmentally friendly farming could reduce carbon emissions up to 18 percent by 2050. Eating more plant-based foods and less meat could cut another 18 percent or more. Diets that are high in grains, nuts and vegetables have a lower carbon footprint than those that are high in meat. Less beef production could reduce the greenhouse gas methane, which cows release in their manure and gas. Are they emitting methane right now? But Kansas cattle no, rancher Brandy Buzzard says the global report is not an accurate portrayal of agriculture in the U.S. U.S. beef production is the most sustainable in the world, and U.S. beef production is only accountable for 2% of greenhouse gas emissions, and that's according to the EPA. Shouldn't more be done to bring that 2% to 0%? It is something, um, but I think we need to remember that we have to eat. We also eat far less than we produce, and cutting down on wasted food will reduce greenhouse gases due to excess food production. UC Davis professor Frank Mitlerner. 40% of all food produced in this country goes to waste. And you know who the main culprit is? You and I. Ironically, while the overproduction of food contributes to climate change, according to the report, a warmer climate would create food insecurity because of more deserts and less farmable land. That means that proper land management and farming techniques are essential to our well-being. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Garnett, Kansas. CBS News contributing meteorologist Jeff Berardelli is here to explain the UN report, and it's a little complicated, so I'm glad you're here to break this down. Yes, I think it's a, a little complicated, complicated is it's an understatement. understatement. That's for sure. I um, want to start with the fact that we're talking about a two degree increase in temperature, uh -huh. and some people might say, well, what's the big deal? Right. So, what's the big deal? Well, if your body temperature goes up by two degrees, you're in trouble. And by the way, this is two degrees Celsius, not two degrees Fahrenheit. It would be like three to four degrees Fahrenheit. Your body temperature goes up three to four degrees Fahrenheit, you're in bed and maybe in the hospital. So, Two degrees is a big deal, and it's not so much the actual two degrees, it's the rate of change. Modern humans have never seen a rate of change that fast, and so sea level rise is likely to be two or three feet by 2100. That means within the course of 50 to 70 years, all these people that are living along the water need to be displaced and moved somewhere else. Also, we see huge desertification of the planet. And so places that used to be able to grow agriculture, especially near the tropics, can't do it anymore because it dries out. Those people then start to migrate to other countries. Now you have huge international and national migration crises and maybe conflict around the world. So there's a lot of, I could go on forever, we could be here an hour <laughs> on this one question, but those are a few of the most important things to take away. Well, it's kind of mind boggling, I think, mm -hmm. for some people. They see this report, it's very dense, there's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of statistics. <laughs> what are the biggest takeaways for you um, and what's new in the report? Right, so the biggest takeaways are that land, the way we use land, affects the climate. Right. And the climate, in turn, affects the land. So I think the most important thing to know is we need to become sustainable with the land. We need to farm sustainably. We need to stop chopping down trees. Right now, uh, there have been reports that in the Amazon rainforest, they're chopping down literally the size of Manhattan worth oh. of forest per day oh, my during goodness. the month of July. Think about that. The size of Manhattan per, per day, day of forest. That forest is so valuable because it sucks up tremendous amounts of carbon dioxide, which mitigates the amount of warming that we see. It helps us with climate change. We need to not only stop deforestation, but plant as many more trees as possible. Yeah, and we talk about that a lot. I, I've heard that a lot. But what are some of the other ways that we can reduce emissions? Because right. this is one step, but 
we're relying on other people too to do that. So if you're sitting here and you're listening to this in the United States, what, what do we do? Buy an energy efficient car. Buy an electric car if you can. If you can't buy an electric car, I had two hybrid cars. I got rid of both of them because I live in the city now. Mm -hmm. But a hybrid car is a good option. Everyone in this country can change their electricity over to wind or solar right now by picking up the phone or getting online. Really? Everybody has access to it. I have, in my old house, I had wind power. In my new uh, apartment in the city, I have solar power. And uh, last but not least, uh, eat less meat. That, okay, yeah. so that is, I, it, you know, you hear deal. that argument all deal. the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are, I, I, there's also, I think, just a taste preference mm -hmm. that, that people are kind of switching or maybe one day a week, don't eat meat. Right. But is that, that's a real argument is let's just, yeah. make, do you want us to stop eating meat or no. just cut back? Cut back on eating meat or maybe beef is the biggest culprit. So chicken doesn't really contribute to carbon dioxide that much, doesn't contribute to global warming that much. Here's the thing. The poor chicken. Here, here's what it, right. <laughs> uh, but fish doesn't contribute. Really. Okay. So it's beef and it's pork, those are the worst. But this is the thing to remember. It's not so much that the cows themselves are producing methane and carbon dioxide. That's not the problem. The problem is in order to feed them, we are clearing vast tracts of forests all over the world. Almost all of deforestation happens because we are trying to feed cows, which we then eat. So it's a very inefficient process. And it, you need tons of water for a pound of beef. So the point is, if you can eat more directly, lower on the food chain, mm -hmm. more nuts, more plants, and less meat, then you, do a, a, you go a big way in curbing your carbon footprint. I know food waste is also an issue. Huge. 40% of the, of the food in the United States is wasted. Think about that. 40%? If, if you go to a school during the, day, uh, during the day and watch them eat, they'll eat maybe half their food, sometimes less than that. The rest has to go in the garbage. Same thing with big catered events. Same thing at oh. home. So that's one thing you can do is make sure you don't waste food. 40% of that's all carbon dioxide that eventually, it, it all degrades and it all just becomes, you know, uh, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Oh, man. Well, there's plenty of things we can there's be doing. There's a lot of then. things that we can do. Jeff, thank you so much. Extreme.